Hello everybody, I'm back with a new video and this week I want to talk to you about the color sensor. The color sensor is a really fun sensor and everybody should know how to use it. So the color sensor is a pretty complicated sensor and you want to be able to use it very well and sometimes it can get miscalibrated by different light levels and stuff. So that's why I talked about the gyro sensor first because I believe it's a little bit more stable in some cases and it's also a lot easier to use. But the color sensor can also be pretty simple. So I've attached the color sensor to my robot on the front here and the uh, instructions to do that will be in the description below. And I also want you to build some of these uh, three wide little uh, blocks of color, right? So we got red ones, there's a blue one, and a green one and there's other colors too I think uh, you can make a black one and a white one and stuff but if you make these um, it makes it easy to test out things for your color sensor um, because if it's not a Lego uh, color that they make um, the color sensor has a little bit more trouble uh, recognizing what color it is if you want to go for that route but there's a lot of different things you can do with the color sensor and uh, I'm gonna talk about those right now all right, let's get started with the color sensor. But first, let's do the engineering term for the day. And this day, this week's engineering term is reflection, where light or sound is bounced off of an object and returned in a different direction. So that's what the color sensor does. The color sensor uh, bounces different colors of light, uh, white, red, um, most commonly red, I believe, with distances. And it bounces it off of a surface, and then when it returns to the color sensor, the color sensor is able to tell the different amount of energy in the light from when it was sent out. And then it can figure out what color it is from there based on how much of the light reflected off of the surface. And so that's how it detects these different colors. Brighter colors it seems to work better with for me. Um, to sense differences, but it's able to sense differences with lots of colors. So first let's just try to get it to work. So we'll do the, uh, the, the easiest way of using the color sensor, which is just to use this and then use a weight block and you set it to color sensor, compare, color. Now there's a lot of other things on here and so change, what change will do is it changes what the uh, color sensor is seen and then compare will read out a value um, for what it's doing. So with the weight block what it does is it waits until it gets to the right value. So if you see the ambient light it can see how much light is in the area from my ceiling light or um, if you're at a competition the uh, big old lights they'll have above wherever they're doing it. And where, um, but yeah, it, it can see the sun, things like that. So ambient light intensity makes it a little bit harder to use sometimes because you will have to um, calibrate it before you use it. So it's a little bit less um, effective. Reflected light intensity is it bouncing the light off and then sensing how much is returned. So if I set it to that, it can do thresholds and stuff like that. So that means if you really have a hard time calibrating, you can make it so that the color sensor um, detects a variety of colors. So everything within a certain value. So that way, if it's really, really sunny out, you still have a pretty good chance of seeing the correct, getting the correct numbers. And you can also set these to, you know, less than, uh, equal, greater than, less than, equal to. Um, but for right now, we're just going to use color. So color is the easiest one to do. And so when it sees one of these colors, whatever colors I pick, and you can pick more than one, by the way, it will uh, stop the motors. So let's just have it sense red right now. And I'll go show you what that does. Alright, so you can see that 
green and blue wouldn't set it off because it's only set to be set off by red. And so that's all it gets set off by. And it's pretty cool. It works very well. Um, pretty much every time, actually. Uh, with just using color, it will almost always work. And if you look at the game field, it'll actually have uh, lines on the field sometimes for your color sensor to follow. And sometimes those lines help, but um, personally, I like to use uh, just uh, like a stop at line program sometimes. Because sometimes line follows get tricked by other colors and stuff. And so they have a lot of hard times. Because if you look at a map, there's a lot of different colors on the map usually. And there's also these little thin black lines on the edge of other lines and stuff uh, between them. So even though sometimes you can get a color sensor to work really well, I still have had one. I've still had everyone I've tried always get tricked at one point. And so I've always tended not to use the color sensor. So some, a program like this will work pretty well because it's stop at line. So it should pretty much always get to the right place. And so that's how that works. And then also, if we go over into our gyro program, remember how we use time for it. Well, if I copy this one over, delete this. If I copy this program over, right? As you can see, this right here can be changed to color sensor. And if you change it to color, right and set it to red now we have a gyro program that will run until it runs into the color red so let me show you that real quick all right so i think that's enough for the color sensor for now you should keep practicing with it and use the other sensors in conjunction with it it is a pretty cool sensor and a lot of people like to use it and some people are able to get it to work pretty well but even as you saw there um in that last video there was a, I, I used a uh, yardstick from Home Depot, and it's orange, obviously, uh, very orange, and it still picked it up as red. So you got to be careful with where you use it, and try to make sure you use it with very contrasting colors so it doesn't get it mixed up. Uh, next time, I'll talk about the color sensor a little bit more in depth, but for now, I'll see you next time, and have a nice day. Bye.